But before we talk about our topic today, we need to remind everybody that as folks are listening to this, it's a Tuesday mm. and tomorrow night you're going to be on primetime television, <laughs> wrestling someone who you have said many times, just as a fan of professional wrestling, that you feel like he is at the top of his game, that perhaps Brian Danielson is the best in-ring storyteller and professional wrestler in the game today. You hold him in that high of regard. And now you're going to step between the ropes against that fellow in prime time tomorrow. And as if that wasn't enough, we got a little special guest in Ricky, the dragon steamboat. And of course we know he is one of the most famous, maybe the most famous opponent of a, a guy who you held in the highest regard. One of your favorite wrestlers when you were first breaking in the macho man, Randy Savage, those guys made history together. You're going to write another chapter in your history tomorrow night on AEW television. Tickets are on sale now for Winston Salem, North Carolina. Go see Jeff live AEWTIX.com. Jeff, what's going through your mind as you're just hours away from wrestling the American Dragon, Brian Danielson? If you saw whether live or on social media, uh, the bit where uh, Brian smacked my hat out of my hands and more or less challenged me to a match that look or that feeling on my face was identical to when I actually found out about it. That, that, that was, uh, I, I, I didn't even have to play a, an extension of, of a part of my personality. That was his, um, uh, emotional and cause Conrad, I mean, he's headed to a main event, the main event, at Wembley challenging for a world title. And you just laid out exactly how I feel about Brian personally, uh, and professionally. I've just got a, a load of respect because what I think, what is Brian five, eight, uh, you know, and I, I don't want to shortchange him or, or overbill it, but let's just say he's not the tallest guy. He's not the biggest guy. I, I wouldn't say that you would say, man, oh man, there's uh uh, Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair, Jerry Lawler, Terry Funk, and Brian Danielson. Those are great promo guys. No disrespect to, to, but so, so I'm saying all that to say what Brian can do with his artistic ability when the bell rings has continually amazed me. Um, to the point that sometimes I just, uh, uh, I just marvel at his ability. Uh, he's hard hitting, he will knock your freaking head off. Um, he cares about the business. Um, he is the essence of what is good about this industry. And I guess above all, when I step into the ring tomorrow night, I have got a healthy respect for him. And I know that having that healthy respect for him will lead me down a path that I will leave nothing on the table. I'm going to come in him with everything I got. Um, I know that I don't get these kind of opportunities. I, I am incredibly best to be getting these kind of opportunities. And I can assure you, Connie, uh, I am going to make the absolute most of this opportunity. I, I, I could throw on the tights and step in the ring right now, but I am – Super fired up on his path to Wembley. Um, Karen, Sanjay, Jay, uh, Satnam. Uh, we have our group texts. And last week, uh, when we all kind of sat down and, and, and digested, this is the way we're going. I had no idea about Steamboat. I found that out just about real time as well. Um, it's big, Conrad. It's really, really big for me. Uh, and I'm, um, like I said, I'm, Celebrated my birthday early this month. I won't talk about the number because that's putting it out in the universe, but I'm uh, 29 and holding. And so, <laughs> but I'm fired up, Conrad. I, I am going to make the most of this opportunity. When you, um, when you think about what you're going to be wrestling for, I mean, you've wrestled for the world title. You've wrestled for number one contender matches. You've wrestled to keep your job, you know, you've, you've wrestled for intercontinental championships and tag team gold and king of the mountain trophies. And 
what do you think you're wrestling for tomorrow night? Like, what's your real motivation? I mean, I know you're, you, you sort of alluded to the fact that, you know, maybe you're on the downhill slide of your career as far as you didn't think you'd be wrestling at this point, but you are. And you've sort of, I mean, we heard you make the analogy before when you were wrestling Hangman, uh, referencing your old pal Toby Keith, that maybe you're not as, well, you know the expression. What what are you wrestling for? What does this match mean to you tomorrow night? And to finish that line, ain't as good as I once was, but I'm good once uh, as I ever was. Um, sometimes, what is that saying, Conrad? Art imitates life. Yep. Then life imitates art. We'll call it the storyline, for the lack of a better uh, words, is that Brian, it's no secret, he wants, for a multitude of reasons, for his full-time career, uh, he's not retiring, but his full-time in-ring career, uh, to, to basically end. But he wants to go out with a bang, and I get that. He has... Been in AEW, been a pillar of the, the of the organization uh, in a multitude of ways, and so he has his well known health issues, and I'll say his not so well known health issues, and so he initiated this in every imaginable way, which to me says a lot. And so I'm going into this to do everything I can. And you can read into this any way you want to, or a number of ways you want to. I'm going to do everything in my power to get Brian Danielson one step closer to winning the world title at Wembley. Everything. So why am I doing it? I'm doing it for Brian. Tomorrow night, AEW Dynamite live. You don't want to miss it. I know I won't. And uh, let's pull for double J. It's going to be weird now for, for me to watch and not be rooting for you to give someone a guitar necklace. Oh, but buddy. You, you never know. You can, you can, you can cheer for that. 